In this video, we'll be talking about vector addition. Suppose two horses are pulling on a tree stump with forces of 200 pounds and 300 pounds with an angle of 65 degrees between the forces. The two forces are represented by vectors A and B. If vectors A and B had the same directions, then the, there would be a total force of 500 pounds acting on the stump. See, we just add the two forces together. But since there's an angle of 65 degrees between the forces, a total force of 500 pounds is not achieved. And this is happening because it's kind of like the, the horses are pulling against each other a little bit because they're not point, pulling in exactly the same direction, so they're getting some resistance from each other as well. It turns out that one force acting along the diagonal of the parallelogram created so you see here, we've got our two original vectors, and we can create a parallelogram here. Remember that a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel congruent sides. So it's almost like just a rectangle that's been pushed over. It turns out that one force acting along the diagonal of the parallelogram created with a magnitude equal to the length of this diagonal has the same effect on the stump as the two forces A and B together. This idea of using the diagonal of your parallelogram is called parallelogram rule. The single force A plus B acting along the diagonal is the sum of vectors A and B, but frequently we call this the resultant of A and B, or the resultant vector. Please note that the sum of two vectors is also a vector. Here we have parallelogram rule clearly stated. Position the vectors A and B so their initial sides coincide their initial points. Then complete a parallelogram that has vector A and vector B as two sides. The diagonal of the parallelogram with the same initial point as A and B is the sum A plus B, or the resultant vector. There is another way to find the sum of two vectors, although we use parallelogram rule probably the most in application problems. What you can do is position the vectors A and B so the terminal point of A coincides with the initial point of B. So you're kind of putting them like beginning to end. The vector A plus B is then the unique vector whose initial point coincides with the initial point of A and whose terminal point coincides with the terminal point of B. But you'll see we get like this kind of weird oblique triangle, and sometimes that's more challenging to find. But honestly, if you look up at parallelogram rule, this right here is the same as vector B. So we're really getting the same diagram. But typically in application problems, uh, parallelogram rule is more applicable because you have two things pulling on a single object. Oh, vector addition follows the same properties as addition of real numbers. Vector addition is both commutative and associative, so we can flip-flop the order, or we can, if we're adding more than one together, add any two together first and then add the third one in. The vector A whose magnitude is zero is called the zero vector. It's assigned no direction. Since it has no magnitude, no length, it's not going anywhere, so it doesn't have a direction. It is a fact that if you take a vector and add the zero vector to it, you get that same vector back. That's just like our additive identity for adding real numbers. If you add zero to a number, it doesn't make a difference. For every vector a, there is a vector negative a that has the same magnitude as a but travels in the opposite direction. This vector is called the opposite of a. It is a fact that if you add a vector with its opposite vector, 
you get the zero vector. And that makes sense if we think about the second technique for adding, that if you line up the initial side of the second vector with the terminal side of the first vector, you see we kind of just go back and forth and we end up right where we started. If vector, if a and b are vectors, we define the difference a minus b as a plus the opposite of b. So again, that still goes right back to our rules of adding real numbers that we can always add the opposite. The scalar product of a real number, which is also called a scalar number, the scalar product of a real number k and a vector u is the vector uk, which has a magnitude that is the absolute value of k times the magnitude of u. If k is greater than zero, the vector ku has the same direction as u, but if the k value is less than zero or negative, the vector ku has the opposite direction of u. And here we have properties of scalar products. All of these properties follow the same rules as our properties for multiplying real numbers. So first one, if you multiply a vector by the number zero, you get the zero vector. If you multiply a vector by one, you get that same vector. If you multiply a vector by negative one, you get the opposite vector. Property number four is a distributive property. It's saying that we can distribute a vector over a sum. And in number five, again, it's a distributive property. Here we have the sum of two vectors and a scalar. So properties four and five give us the option. In number four, if you have two scalars, you can add them together first and then multiply it by the vector, or you have the opposite option of distributing. And in property five, when we're adding two vectors, you can do that first and then multiply by the scalar, or you can distribute the scalar. And then property number six, that has to do with associativity. You can either multiply the vector by one of the scalars and then the second scalar, or you can multiply the two scalars together first and then multiply it by the vector. So what I'd like you to get out of this video, other than parallelogram rule, what the resultant vector is, and our second technique for adding vectors, is that addition and multiplication of vectors follows the same properties as addition and multiplication of real numbers.